what I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of RX Bars, P90X, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP special events and masterminds for conferences and software companies so they can serve their highest level customers. Basically, they consider us their secret weapon for increasing engagement, getting more referrals, and building deeper relationships with their customers. We do them all over the country. We've hosted this past year in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, none in Columbus, Ohio yet, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, Vegas. Um, So if your company sees the value of bringing your highest level customers together to connect and collaborate, go to Rise25.com and contact us. I am very excited. Today we have Dave Kalina, the co-founder of O2, which started in Columbus, Ohio in 2014. O2 is an oxygenated natural recovery drink, and it was created by a CrossFit trainer and a medical doctor who were sick of unhealthy sports and energy drinks. If anyone could relate, I can for sure. It has electrolytes, natural caffeine, and added oxygen to help your body process toxins faster. I do want to talk about that. And they've gone from slinging O2, humble beginnings, out of the back of a Prius, uh, to very uh, you know environmentally friendly, to becoming a top seller at hundreds of CrossFit gyms, whole food stores in Ohio, Kentucky, Pennsylvania, D.C., and Maryland, as well as Kroger's now. Dave, thanks for joining me. Hey, it's, it's great to be here. Talk about some of the mistakes, and um, I want to talk also after that about the initial kind of the, the evolution of selling, right? From mm-hmm. the back of your Prius yeah. to yeah, yeah. to CrossFit gyms to whatever. But yeah. um, what were some of the mistakes that um, you've ironed out since then? Well, a big a big glaring one, I'll just go in <clears throat> chronological order with the, with the highlights. Um, the, the, the biggest glaring one was, was actually before uh, we even launched. You know, I, one of the, the few intelligent things I did um, before we launched was I pulled together a, a, an advisory board of people who had become, you know, very accomplished people who I'd known for years, who'd become sort of mentors to me over the course of my career. Um, one guy used to be a professor of mine at Ohio State. Um, another guy, um, he was the chief marketing officer at Nationwide who I worked for, um, and, and a few others. And we had, a, we had a meeting shortly before we launched, and we we're talking about launch plans. And, you know, I'd, I'd uh, after I left my job, in between leaving Nationwide and starting O2, I had started, uh, among other things, coaching CrossFit and coaching Krav Maga um, just to kind of make, make ends meet. And it was fun, you know. Um, and so one of the guys asked me, he was like, do you think, you know, maybe we should sell at CrossFit gyms? Like, you, you, you're into that scene, and there seems to be a lot of them, and it's grown in popularity. This is 2013. Like, what do you think about that idea? And I kind of, <laughs> that's a stupid idea. Like, who's, who's going to buy who's gonna buy a drink at a CrossFit gym, please? Like, I go in with my water bottle and my pre-made protein shake and you know I, I leave without spending a dime ha 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 um I, I couldn't have been more more wrong and and in retrospect you know now still uh, two-thirds of our business is mm-hmm. is it's from crossfit gyms um yeah. that's that's changing over time but but that's the backbone of our business yeah and i mean look at rx bar right exactly same story and and i think that you know when those guys might tell you the same thing, when I look at that now, it's so clear why that makes sense. You've got a product that really fits. You know, you've got a natural tie into that market. My background as a as a CrossFit coach, those guys I understand to be CrossFitters. Um, you've got a a extremely loyal group of 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 of, of clientele there. Um, that that are somewhat vain and talk a lot about CrossFit, right? And so there's an avenue for word of mouth. Um, it's hard for other companies to get into because there has to be a genuine tie into CrossFit. They care about what they put inside their bodies. And oh, by the way, you know they've got the income to spend $120, $150 a month on a gym membership. 
So what's three dollars for a drink, right? Um, and so it, it, it there's there's a lot of reasons why that makes sense. Um, but at the time, I was I just thought it was a stupid idea. Um, so so that was probably mistake number one um, that uh, that sticks out. You know, another um, kind of fun anecdote is that. Uh, so when when we when we launched O2, we we did our first production run, and this was like a huge monumental deal because it's something that you know had we'd been working towards for four years, and you know we 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 raised uh, we raised a couple hundred thousand dollars, which is a monumental amount of money to us, and we raised it from from like our heroes, you know, my mentors and their friends, yeah. and we we came out with this product, we got somebody to bottle it, it tasted great. And the can looked cool. You know, we, we designed it ourselves. We thought it looked awesome. It looked okay in retrospect, but we thought it looked <laughs> awesome. And and so we did our we did our first production run, and everything was going so well. Like it was going great. The first couple of weeks were awesome. Like when we when we launched, we launched at the Arnold Sports Festival, which is this huge fitness festival. Um, huge. Takes place every year in Columbus, yeah. Ohio. I think it's the largest in the world, and brings in a quarter of a million dollars, a quarter of a million people into Columbus. Uh, for for a weekend basically, and I had been judging the CrossFit part of that um, oh, wow. competition for for a while, and so I was I was scheduled to judge that year too. And so I knew the guy who put it on. He and I used to train together, and we became friends. and uh, And I basically conned him into sneaking me in to the Arnold uh, so that I could avoid paying a paying a booth fee um, while at the same time launching our drink among this huge group of CrossFitters. And so so day one. The whole time, again, a stupid joke. I always joke that I'm, I was the worst judge there because the whole time I'm looking over, like, do people like my drink? I was looking over at the booth that was manned by my 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 girlfriend at the time, not knowing whether or not anyone was was going to be into what we had just made. But it turns out people really liked it, and and we they liked it so much we went through our entire weekend supply in the first four or five hours, wow. and so we were off to such a great start, better than we could have anticipated. Well, one day, about two weeks after we launched. Um, I was, I remember I was at, I was, I was at our office, um, and our, by our office, I mean the empty room in the warehouse that, uh, we stored, we stored our pallets in and I was, I was packaging, uh, shipments or online our online shipments, uh, packaging those to go out via USPS later that day. And we, I see a Facebook message from, um, some fan come, come through on my phone that said something effective. You know, hey guys, really like your product. I just I just picked it up at you know my gym, and you know I'm a I'm an avid um, avid fan of of nutritional products, and I'm a, a close label reader too, and I come from a science background. So I wanted to ask you, how is it that you have um, 370 grams of of uh, sodium and 360 grams of potassium uh, in in your drink? Like that surely can't be right, right? And so I see this come through, and I, you know, I was, I was trying to get all these orders out the door. So I sent a text to Dan, the doctor. I'm like, "Hey, man, somebody's got a question about the electrolyte content. Can you feel this?" Um, and so he's like, "Yeah, no problem." So about 10 minutes later, um, he calls me, and 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 Dan and I we never really chat on the phone. You know, it's either in person or by text. So that was my first indicator that something was wrong. And my second indicator was when he, I pick up the phone, and he's like. Hey man, um, we need to talk. Are, are you sitting down? And nothing ever and good like, comes after <laughs> nothing that. Nothing ever good. You never want to hear that. And I'm like, I'm not sitting down, but I can be. Why? What's up? He's like, Well, you know how that guy just asked how we have 370 grams of sodium and 360 grams of potassium in O2. I'm like, Yeah. He's like, Well, that's because that's what's that's what's written on the side of the can on the nutrition facts panel. I'm like, So what? He's like, Well. 370 grams of sodium would be a lethal dose of sodium. It would, would, would actually be about a pound of salt, meaning, <laughs> meaning we made a typo on the can. And, and these cans are not done in runs of, of 100 or, or 200. The minimum production run of a can that you can buy is 155,000 cans. And we just printed... 300,000 cans because we did two of those runs. So, so we had a tremendous typo on the, in the nutrition facts panel, the last place that you want to have a typo. We had a giant typo on the side of 300,000 cans of O2. And so 
you know, immediately, like, I, I hope you've never experienced this. I started tunneling, like tunnel vision, world crashing down, you know, and and so I, I, I certainly sat down. I remember laying down sort of in a fetal position, crying game type of thing um, and, and thinking, oh you God. know what? Well, like, at, at least we got something off the ground, you know, and, and people. I was just thinking you re, you renamed the beverage lethal dose. And that's <laughs> lethal dose. You just go with, with, like, with like, you know, red line or, you know. <laughs> killer energy um but i thought the world was over i thought the drink was over i thought everything was over you know we, we had a good run of it people seemed to like what we made but we screwed it up um well it, it, after i picked myself back up and 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 called um by far the most expensive attorney that that i've ever encountered in my life he's kind of the leading beverage attorney out there uh, turns out people do this. People make mistakes like this all the time, okay. and which is not assuring to me still to this day <laughs> that that happens as often as it does. But at least there was something to do about it. Number one, uh, you could just ignore it and fix it on on the next can, is what he was saying. Number two, uh, you can uh, scrap all that product and all those cans and start over. Well, ignoring was an option for us. That's not really the the honest and transparent thing to do. Um, and scrapping it was certainly wasn't an option to us because all that cash that we had just raised was tied up in inventory. It's like, or you could you could you could kind of sticker over it. Um, and I'm like, well, what do you mean sticker over it? Well, you could you could get basically a, a a sticker, a small you know sticker that says milligrams instead of grams, and just apply those to the cans. And I'm thinking, oh my god, how would that possibly happen? I'm like, I, I'm I've got if you drink a can, can you sticker. Yeah. yeah, right. Maybe everyone comes with a sticker. Um, and so thinking this through, I'm like, well, the first two things aren't options. The third one, maybe that's an option, I guess. And so I, I, I with my tail between my legs, um, bring this problem to our advisory board and, and thankfully they didn't shoot me. Instead, they, they gave me some pretty solid advice and, and the, uh, the marketing officer on the board, um, Jim had a great idea, which was, you know what, you guys are trying to make like this honest and open company. And, and you're trying to do some good in the world, why don't you guys just kind of own that mistake in a funny way? What you can do is maybe you can do like a little call-out sticker that says, oops, like we screwed up, sorry, this should be in milligrams versus grams, our bad. And I thought, that's perfect. Like, that's exactly what we'll do. And so that is that is exactly what we did. We made a, a small little sticker and printed off 300,000 of them that said, oops, these should be. These should read in milligrams versus grams. Are bad, and we applied it to the side of every single can wow. from that first production run. So, and what that meant was every single weekend we were in the warehouse, me and Dan, and if we could wrangle in a friend or two, or a sibling or two, or a significant other, um, we would. And over the course of the first nine months of the company, that's exactly how we spent our weekends. Um, but you know, in retrospect. Nobody cared, and if they did, they loved it because it was kind of a cool little anecdote, yeah. and people thought it was funny, honestly. Um, but that was uh, that was the first major mistake that I made was that giant misprint. But once you make a mistake like that, you, you're damn sure it doesn't happen again. You know, you know, Dave, this has been fantastic. I want to keep going for another two hours, but um, we are at the top of the hour, unfortunately. Um, so we didn't get to talk about the the evolution i know you guys have gotten into whole foods and kroger's yeah. and we didn't talk about some of the rapid scaling and growth that's coming up next and we didn't talk about um the team that you've built which was which is really interesting to me and we didn't talk about the packaging and going a deep dive into why the cans why not glass bottles why yeah. not plastic yeah, yeah, bottles yeah. all that stuff but for another day um this has been fantastic and yeah, great. um I want to point people towards drinko2.com. Um, and if there are any other places on the web that we should point people towards, and I'll, I'll ask you one last question, which you can answer quickly because I know you have another yeah. meeting. But um, where else should we point people towards online? Um, I'm going to be going today and buying it for sure. Oh, thank you. Um, where else uh, online? I know people can get on Amazon. Yeah. What's... So, so check it out. Check us out on on Amazon. Uh, we're on Amazon. Free Prime shipping. I love it. Um, at drinko two dot com. It's the letter O, the number two. And and earlier we were talking about about that special way for people to get effectively free samples that 
if your audience has listened through my rantings for this much, I feel like we owe it to them. <laughs> so if they go to uh, drinko2.com forward slash try O2, you can get one can of, of each flavor um, mm. for 99 cents with free shipping. Um, so check that out. That's crazy. Uh, we just ask nobody be a jerk and try to take advantage of that one, one per person, please. Um, and if we do a round two, then maybe we'll have, uh, we'll have something more for people then. Yeah. Support them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. So how do they get that? They go to drinko2.com slash try O2. Try O2 and then okay. enter the code sample okay. at checkout. And that'll cool. take the price from, Very I think, six ninety nine to $0.99. Cents. So buy one and then buy it at full price after that. Um, yes. So we talked about a low point, you know, of basically mislabeling all these. What's been a high, just to end on a high point, high note, What's what's been a big milestone you're especially proud of? Well, we're, uh, we recently launched with Kroger, Kroger's division in central Ohio, um, which, which encompasses pretty much all of Ohio and parts of Michigan, ex- except for Cincinnati. And, uh, and, and we're right now, we're the number two and number three items in our category, which That's is really amazing. exciting. Amazing. And we're, we're only just getting started. Well, Dave, congratulations so far. Thank you. Uh, it's a long journey, but go to everyone go to drinko2.com and, and check it out and try some. So I'm going to be the first one. Dave, thank you so much. Jeremy, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better. I'm-